As long as people have been around, we just can't seem to get along with each other. And we discovered a long time ago that if you have an argument with somebody and you kill them, that the argument goes away very conveniently. In order to be an effective killer, you have to be in practice, and it's hard to find victims to use on a regular basis. So we've done what we've always done in our Western European society. We've turned these very important skills into games. So fencing is the game, or the sport, of sword fighting. Doing became a very important part of resolving disputes. Today, if we have an argument with each other, we pay our lawyers lots of money and sue each other in court. But in the old days, you would be called out to a duel. So having a certain amount of skill with the sword was a very important part of a young person's education. The epée was the modern version of the French short sword. It was sharp only at the tip, and a large triangular shaped blade, so that when you hit somebody, the blade would stay straight and go through them, making a rather large triangular shaped hole. <laughs> Holes are a lot harder to heal than cuts. They create a lot more damage with a lot less effort. It also has a large bell guard to protect the hand. <laughs> People started dying left and right all throughout Europe. And Italian fencing masters saw the opportunity to make a little money. And so what they did is they opened shops to teach young folks how to survive duels. But they had a problem. If you use an epe, you kill your students and that's bad. So they developed a training weapon called the foil. <laughs> the foil is the same length as an epee, but it had a blunted tip and a blade that was thinner and more rectangular in cross section. So this blade bends. So now when you hit your training partner, you have a training weapon. And you can learn all the moves you need to know to survive a sword fight without risking the dangers of a real sword fight. When the old masters were coming up with ideas for training their students, <laughs> they wanted them to be deadly. So they limited the target to the torso. Almost any hit would be lethal. They wanted you to understand the nature of fighting, so they came up with this idea of priority or right of way. It's real simple. You're not allowed to commit suicide. If you attack, that's great. But if you are attacked, you should defend yourself before you attack back. There's a third weapon in fencing that comes from a more Eastern European tradition and a more military tradition, and that's the saber. Saber has a long cutting edge as well as a sharp point. The bell guard is curved around the knuckles to protect from the cut. This is particularly useful for soldiers on horseback chasing bad guys who aren't. The target area in saber is from the waist up because from the waist down was a horse. The modern sport of fencing reflects these traditions in our rules. Saber fencing, you can use any part of the blade. The target is from the waist up, including the arms and the head, and saber also has that priority right-of-way rule. In foil, you must hit on a limited target, the torso. You can only hit with the point. And foil also has that priority or right-of-way rule. Epe is as close as we can get to a duel without killing someone. You must hit with the point alone, but you can hit anywhere. All that matters is that you hit first. If you hit first, you win the touch. If you hit at the same time, you both win the touch. So let's see what modern sport fencing looks like. Thanks for watching our introduction to fencing. 
If you'd like more information, please contact us at the Renaissance Fencing Club or renaissancefencing.com. You could also look up USA Fencing at usfencing.org.